Well, we've been in Mayo, Galway, Sligo, all over Tipperary as well. And we're out in the Iron Islands now today. We were in one place, I can't actually remember where it was, and we're taking down a phone box. And this woman came out and goes, oh, that's an end of an era now, that phone box going. It's a shame to see it going. You shouldn't take it down, that should stay. And I just said to her, like, when was the last time she used it? And she couldn't remember when the last time she was using it, but yet she wanted it there. She turned around and she goes, oh, yeah. I suppose, and <laughs> turned around and walked away. Hello? Where, Where are the boys to take, take down, down the phone, phone box? There was a lot of controversies about getting a, a, a public phone box. Uh, a lot of business people would like to see the public box also, either a shop or pub, particularly a shop if would, uh, a small village with two shops in it. It would be vital to get the public phone outside your shop. I suppose a lot of them got with um, through politics. And all, who you know, all about who you know, but there was no doubt about it. The phone box was a big addition if we had it outside your door. They were, at that time, a lifeline for rural Ireland. They had no other way of contacting people away from home if they wanted to have a chat with them. And I think having a chat is better than 20 letters. The people always say that to me. Well, that phone box there, it arrived, about, I think about 1975. But it was important, yeah, because uh, before that, there was, there was quite a number of phones on the island. I didn't know how many was there. There was, I think there must have been 20 or 30 all over the island. But then, of course, you had to go to your neighbor's house to, to use them, because they used the one that was in the post office here, whereas this one was, it was out in the open, it was available all the time for anyone who wanted to use it. And, well, it was a step forward at the time. So it was the same as it was happening every other part in the country. I'd say there must be one or two calls a year, and uh, it had been used now for a while, I'd say. So why would I take it, sir? I mean, it any cost money to take it. That was my leave there. It'll rat away eventually, like, like, like we'll all rat away eventually. I will, uh, someday I might get a notion and clean it up and paint it up and to look respectable for another spell. I might. There was three phones that I remember. There was one in the guard station. There was one in Kate Patz's pub and there was one in the middle of the street. Now, you didn't go to the guard station to make phone calls, and especially I didn't, because my father was a guard. You were, certainly weren't going to go to the pub, but the whole world would hear you there as well. Whereas if you went to the phone box, no one would be listening unless they were standing outside the door. I have memories now of the characters in the village, and I'd be summoned down to make phone calls on behalf of them. I'm sure someone didn't know how to even pick up the phone. You know, they'd be holding the phone that way and that way, like, oh, it was very funny. That was great fun, really, you know. Now I also remember it being used as a, an overnight stop for fellas who had too much to drink. Also, it would have been used for courting. I would have been too young, really, to know how it was going on, but I knew it was something that I shouldn't know about. Yeah, but people were much more civilised then too, you know. People weren't in such, in such a hurry either. You kind of tell somebody, you know, if someone was before you, look, I'm expecting John to ring from England. And if that was the case, out of respect, you'd say, grand, I'll come back later. Like, how we use the phone box would be very reflective of society at the time. Will I start then? Yeah, do. If you like. The phone box was just part of our romance. Oh, That's exactly. all it was. <laughs> just part of our romance. I'd be waiting for Johnny on the bridge in Killaloo, and he'd put on, pa <laughs> uh, you wouldn't remember anyway, Pat Boone. <laughs> Pat Boone used to have a song that time and it was love letters in the sand. And once he come around the corner of the, <laughs> of the shan, he'd put on the record and I'd know, I'd know that they were coming and I'd know and, and every evening he'd play that. Yeah. And the, the lovely place and the lovely Shannon and the boat would come down and turn and back up and let off the passenger. There were two pleasure boats brought to Killaloo. He worked as an engine man on the St. Brendan for the summer. 
I met him then at a dance in Killaloo. When the summer period was over then, he had to go back to the engineer boats in Dublin or wherever he'd be working. He'd write Monday, so it'd be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, again you get the letter. Then he'd say, I'll ring you on the Thursday. I had to walk from Colina, which is outside of Ballina, down the hill, <coughs> into Ballina, cross the bridge, up the hill of Killaloo, and the phone box was right in the centre of the hill. Hail, rain or snow, put on your clothes, put on your coat and your cap. Or I hadn't even an umbrella. I didn't even have an umbrella, tell you the truth. I'd wait and I'd wait and I'd wait. Eventually he would ring and we'd talk for a few moments, be very little, five minutes, because it cost a lot. At that time, there wasn't much money anyway. So one weekend, he said, I've enough of this. <laughs> I've enough of this now. He said, we'll get married. <laughs> <laughs> this year, our 50th, we celebrate this year. And please God, Finally, be 70 in August, and we'll have to have another party. <laughs> but uh, it's strange. This yeah. That's it. Well, uh, welcome to Donegal. Uh, way back about f uh, a few years ago, we we had a telephone box installed in this area here. So this is the pathway into the phone box. This is where the famous phone box was installed. And as you can see uh, behind me, you can see where the uh, cables are still and the poles are still here. And this is where the two ladies ran into difficulties. Two average sized people when they got into the telephone box. When they got into the telephone box, they would have a they would have a problem of movement inside. So uh, their movement inside the telephone box would definitely be restricted. Yes, yes. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> it was very bad weather, and uh, the the telephone box, the doors that was on the telephone box, actually opened in 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 the way instead of out. So the two of them got into the, the telephone box for to get a bit of shelter, and when they closed the door. They couldn't get back out again. <laughs> because of the door, they couldn't find the handle. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck using that camera anyway. So, I'm still laughing. Well, it was 1969. It was a Saturday morning. It was the 4th of October. There obviously were signs that something had been told the night before that maybe things would happen during the night. So I got up early. It must have been around six, half six, and went down to the phone booth. Made my call to the hospital. I was put through, and I was told that my wife had produced a beautiful daughter, and both were fine. That was it. I put down the receiver and stepped out of the phone booth like, I suppose, felt like Superman, uh, having just uh, gone in as Clark Kent. I walked back up uh, to our little house in Canano and I bowed my eyes out with joy and relief. I was just so happy. So that's my memory of the phone booth, that it was a wonderful place to be on an October morning, a Saturday morning uh, in 1969. My school's like 10 minutes away, so it's usually raining here and I have to wait for the bus. Like I usually hop into the phone box <laughs> and there's like a crack in the window, so I usually kind of look out and see if the bus is coming. And I was walking, I saw the letter, and I usually don't take any notices of things, so I stopped and I looked and I was like, oh God. And it said something like it would be taken away. It's supposed to be Stradbally Village, it's not a village without a pub and a phone box. I'll definitely miss it anyway, because and have no more bus shelter.
being a very nosy p- person that Ronald is. Observant. No, <laughs> no that wasn't what I said. <laughs> that anything, That's what any, you meant. Anything, any changes that it would be about the place, he would see them first. So Thanks, John. Now, I was just walking past the phone box and happened to notice the sign in it. It just said that Aircom intend to remove this public payphone. I think it was two weeks later. Moving it, it was the talk of the village and the parish. In fact, the whole area was talking about it. People just said, no, that won't happen. We won't allow it to happen. Because it's a focal point in the village, like, you know. And it's also very much part of our past culture, like, you know, and too many things like that are disappearing now. About 23 years ago, I think it's about 23 this year, somebody rang me up saying that there was a lorry and some pickaxes and sledges coming down to smash the telephone box and put a new casing. I think myself that there is always somebody in every village and town who's passionate about their architecture and about the historical aspect of the area. I think I'm one of those people, I'm just one. There are other people as well who are passionate about it, but maybe I'm a bit more outspoken. And I think I like being a little bit controversial as well myself. A lady called Marion Crowley and myself stepped inside the telephone box and we would not allow them to smash it. They knew that we were not going to leave the telephone box, so they went away and hence it has been there today. People like John is a sort of one-man show, like he started it off and people sort of were happy enough for him back to me now. Looking back he was right, that uh, it's definitely have the character and the old ones look better. They're supposed to be losing money, but you know, if everything was losing money closed down, should there be nothing in rural Ireland, you know? When was the last time you used a phone box? When was the last time? Oh my god. Um, uh, oh. Oh, it must be, it must be ten, ten years or more ago. And that was about three years ago. Maybe ten, ten or twelve years ago? Literally because I ran out of credit and that was the only reason. Possibly two years ago, myself. Sadly to say. Do you know, I'm sad because it's an end of an era. That's the only reason I'm saying it. I rang my brother now last night and he's in London. He's two years younger than me and I'm saying, John, about the phone box. God, he said, that phone box that we'd be lost without it. But it's just the time, the people and the place has all changed. just of another era, but they were they were important and the whole histories could be written of the joys and the sorrows. And, you know, it's um, all human life was in that little, uh, that little phone booth. Mm-hmm.